I made an obstacle course in my front yard for my delivery men. If they want to deliver the package, they have to complete my seven part Ninja Warrior course. Whoever completes the course in the fastest time will win $10,000, but they don't know this. Let's see if any delivery drivers will attempt or complete the course and deliver their package. And it all starts right here. This is the only obstacle on the course that requires literacy and a legally binding signature so they can attempt the rest of the course. If they try to begin any other way, the cops will be called and they'll be sent to jail. So the first challenge is the podium of legal bindings. Now this may look easy, but if they sign it, I legally own their home. Next up is the monkey bars of death. They have to place their package on this pulley system, crank it all the way across, and then cross the monkey bars. Now, this may look simple, but I've secretly wired the bars with 10,000 volts of electricity that I can shock them with at any time. Just kidding. If they make it through that, next up is the balance beam of despair. They must not fall into the pit of aggressive man-eating dogs <laughs> while also avoiding stepping on dog poo. Next up is the box maze of a thousand corridors. They must place their package on top of the pile of packages left by those who perish trying to complete the maze. They must take the packages of the deceased all the way through so their souls may finally rest. Next up is the gauntlet, equipped with the four package pendulums of peril. If they don't get stabbed by the razor sharp knives inside each box, not kidding. Then they reach the package launch bonus round. This giant mailbox is wired to open and close indefinitely. They have to take these tiny packages and for every single package they make into the mailbox, it's 20 extra dollars. And if they make it through all that, they come to the world's most satisfying warp wall. Here is where I place their favorite treat, $200 cash at the end of the course. They press this button here to end the timer and celebrate with a train horn and confetti. Yay! Why $200 cash? I'm glad you asked. I'm using cash because over the course of a week, I put out a treat stand using six different tasty human treats. And all four times I repeated the experiment, $200 cash was always the one they chose first. So to get started, I ordered a bunch of things online with different couriers. I scheduled them for a specific day and put a sign out front to incentivize them. Then we invited some of our website members to come cheer them on. Now we wait for the delivery men to deliver. After hours of waiting and no delivery men coming, we decided to order some DoorDash because it's more predictable. We got a few DoorDash drivers to participate, but still no real delivery men. After waiting outside most of the day, still no delivery drivers had come. They ended up coming that night at like 10 p.m. It wasn't really an option to wait outside all day with cameramen, so I set up security cameras that record 24 seven, connected them to the NVR, turned on the stadium lights, turned on notifications on my phone. Now I was ready at all times. Our first couple delivery drivers showed up, but they must have not seen the course. It's easy to miss. Or maybe they spoke Spanish, so I put another sign out front in Spanish with a clear cash incentive. Then I got my first contestants. He started to approach. Will he attempt the first obstacle? Come on, come on. He's in. Another possible contestant arrived. Yes, he's doing it. Another possible contestant arrived. Scalpel. Oh, just a sec. Doctor, <laughs> doctor, he's hemorrhaging. <laughs> he's going into cardiac arrest. Come on. He's going, pressure, more pressure. All of the drivers were completing the first obstacle with ease. I have five contestants all unknowingly competing against each other, but only one of them will be the next Delivery Ninja Warrior. As the timer began for each contestant, some were more excited to get started than others. Now, I didn't hide a scale under the course and secretly weigh all of my contestants, but it was immediately clear that Gus was the fattest, which is probably why his name is Fat Gus. They approached the monkey bars of death and began their journey to $10,000. While Doug made sure to go through slow and steady, Chris and Brandon got their packages through no problem. Joseph had an interesting approach, ignoring the crank altogether. Meanwhile, Doug ended up losing one of his packages. Chris had a rough start crossing the monkey bars. Doug managed to avoid falling in like his packages did, and Brandon was in and out, no problem. Mm -hmm. 
Doug went back and reclaimed his package, and Chris was ready to give it another try. And he's finally through, but wait, forgetting something, Chris? Uh-huh. What else? Oh, good, I lost my work phone. Oh, unfortunate. There we go. We're good. And then we have Fat Gus, who opted to ignore the pulley system and shoved the package in his pants. Bar after bar, he slowly but surely, but slowly, very slowly, makes his way to the end. Now onto the balance beam, which for Fat Gus, the hardest part was just getting on it. The contestants shook with fear as they crossed the balance beam of despair. If we zoom in and enhance the image, we can see the terror in his eyes. Not wanting to be consumed by the man-eating dogs, they carefully maneuvered their way across while also avoiding the dog poo. Then the contestants approached the box maze of a thousand corridors. It is the most twisted, complicated, mind-shattering obstacle in the entire course. The raw fear of the labyrinth shook Doug to his core. They made their way through the twists and turns of the maze, nearly losing all of their sanity in the process. This is genuinely the coolest delivery I've ever done. And then we have Fat Gus, who, in an effort to make up for lost time, ignores basic direction and finds a much faster path than the intended one. Now in regard to the gauntlet, the distance between two boxes is about 26 inches across, whereas Fat Gus is clocked in at 35 inches wide. I know this exact calculation because I guessed. Despite the delivery driver's clear love of boxes, they avoided them at all costs. Even Fat Gus did an exceptional job. And I should mention that the delivery drivers were most active every morning between 6 and 10 a.m. So every morning, instead of getting up before the sunrise like some glitter bomb NASA nerd, I've been sleeping in and letting my cameras do the work for me. As Gus exited the gauntlet, he had a... Wait a second. Play that back? And freeze. Zoom. X-ray. Ultrasound. Oh my god. Well, turns out Fat Gus is not a dude. And he's pregnant. So I was suddenly feeling real uncomfortable about all those weight comments. After a bit of a pivot to smooth things over, they soldiered on to the package launch bonus round. And even though this obstacle is easy in theory, it proved difficult for most of the contestants. You can see missing the shot took an emotional toll on Doug. In the end, only Joseph and Brandon were able to secure an extra $20. The contestants approached the warp wall, still having no idea that $10,000 was on the line. As instructed, they threw their packages on top of the wall effortlessly. Well, except for Fantastic Gus. There we go. The warriors prepared to climb the warp wall, the final stage of their journey. But who would deliver? Joseph and Doug made their way to the front door and delivered their packages. I was hoping I'd be home to accept the delivery because what they didn't realize was inside their packages was a medal for completing the course. So I put a sign on the actual front door telling them to open their package and wear their medal. Come on, read the note, read the note, read the note. Has the metal loose in. Put 
it on your neck, come on. Yeah, you won! <laughs> How are you feeling right now? Exuberant. <laughs> this is gonna cover my whatever I need. Now I just had to give him his secret $10,000 prize. But hang on, you're probably wondering how Fantastic Gus handled the warp wall. Here it is. Proving once and for all that size does matter. Thanks, Fantastic Gus. I felt bad that Fantastic Gus was the only contestant who didn't make it up the warp wall. I did want to send him something for his effort, so I sent him a free t-shirt. None of these are gonna fit him. So I had to hire a company that makes bed sheets to tailor a shirt specifically for him. I also included an official certificate of incompletion. Remember, Gus, if at first you don't succeed, always give up. Wow. You came in at three minutes and 57 seconds. That's easy work. Now, you didn't know this out of time, but you were competing for first prize of $10,000. No way. What? It's all yours. Right here? No way. $10,000. Oh my God. How do you feel? Now I'm feeling extremely exuberant. Holy crap. Thank you. This is gonna go towards my freaking car. Wait a second, I thought you drove a delivery vehicle. <laughs> I do. <laughs> Now, it's worth mentioning that Chris could have gotten second place instead of third, but he took his sweet time pressing the button on top of the warp wall. So, oh well. Either way, there's no constellation pr consummation pr constipation pr He wouldn't have won anything anyway. Now, I have three new pranks for you on the website. You can only see them there. So the first one is filling a couch with concrete and then hiring movers to move it. The second is going to a dealership to test drive a new car, driving it to another dealership and test driving another new car. And third is a giant dog walks a human at the dog park and then Cole's gonna poop. And I wanna welcome another creator to the website, No One Safe. We have over 70 members only videos there. It's $12, you can start anytime, stop anytime. Go become a member or I'm gonna roast you for 10 minutes straight, just like Gus.